too close. You want to go in the desert or somewhere? No, I want to avoid uh, breathing dust. Dust? How can you how can you avoid the dust you're breathing? Huh? I try. You try. Especially today that it's raining, huh? Yeah, especially today there's so much dust. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> comes a specialty. That's why it's called specialty. <laughs> yeah, I know it's specialty. Special. Yeah, it's shy and specialty. Maybe. Maybe? Green tea is bad. You know that. You get old. It's true. Antitoxic tralala. Ah. And also found out the people with cancer, they eat healthy and have all these vitamins they get and then the cancer likes it. And it grows even more. <laughs> <laughs> What's good is for the good cells is, good, is as good as for the bad ones. Yes. <laughs> so now they all eat meat and all bad stuff and McDonald's. All the cancer people can now go to McDonald's. A new tactic. <laughs> <laughs> Burger King, maybe. And Jack in the Box. <laughs> Pizza and hamburger. If you want to survive, pizza. Good. So, now we can start. Germans are here, fit, looking like Indian. I try. <laughs> <laughs> but it doesn't work. But look, you did everything. <laughs> I try hard. <laughs> the one who really wants to melt in really pops out. Eh? <laughs> look, sweater, she wants to look like a Western. <laughs> it's a trick, and then it's yeah. oh. <laughs> it's like another tactic, eh? like a military tactic, how to get attention. Good, who wants to start? <laughs> no, you're happy? Okay. <laughs> okay. Brazil has no question anyway. Litauen. Uh, yes, I have a question, but I have to formulate it. Yes, I have. You have a translator in there? Uh, yeah, uh. some of are translated. So I have to improve. Always improve. Yeah, me too. I, I only do these things to improve my English. <laughs> <laughs> Not that I say I, I speak English, I just... That would be already... But it's a good sample. Like, uh, I improve my English when I uh, listen to don't, don't learn the English from me. <laughs> <laughs> that would be... <laughs> So, what's your question? Uh, I have to formulate it, yeah. Yeah, I think you have to formulate it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just start and I continue. <laughs> yeah, it's like, um, it's like um, I want to find the difference uh, between uh, the, the novice term and Sakhaj, Samadhi. The demons? Demon. Terms. Terms. Yes, terms. Terms of Samadhi. Sakhaj, Samadhi. Yeah. Maha. Sahaj, Sahaj. 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 Turiya. What? The novice term. Turiya. Turiya. I know Turiya tea. Turiya tea. Tulsi. 
Ah, I forgot that. Yeah. I always mix it up. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm not an expert in the dentic uh, term terminology, whatever. So what is the meaning of that summary? It's like um, when you have, you can't see a separation, um, like you see God everywhere. So that's called oneness, I think. Yeah, yeah, this one. So... Uh, we just talk English and then forget the Indian terminology. <laughs> Two days more. <laughs> <laughs> no, just try it. Yeah. yeah, and I want to um, at this uh, stage uh, when you, like people in life, but they can't, uh, they still have a feeling of separation. Yeah, they still have a feeling of separation. Subtle, very subtle feeling. Separation between them and uh, different people and yeah, different objects. Yeah. And um, acceptation of uh, each moment, uh, yeah, like in which of those two uh, levels, uh, this is more pure. <laughs> I think you lost me already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just listening to your voice. <laughs> <laughs> because that's an honest attempt. Yeah, see, before I have to... No, no, that's a, for, for me, the <laughs> more, more important is that you are really sincere in your... It doesn't matter if the question is whatever, profound or anything. Mm -hmm. But you really cry. <laughs> and you already have the experience of fail. <laughs> it was quite nice if you cannot even pronounce the question. <laughs> it's quite an advanced state. Yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Because then it means like it's not a hearsay, more or less, or it's, it's not like out of a book or something, or it, it's already a, a pronounced question before, he just remembers or something, he just wants to work on his question. <laughs> and it's very hard, because what you are has no question, and you have to make something up, so you have to create something for that. You have to fit things together, puzzles together. You, you don't le take a ready-made question to ask. You want to, whatever, find. Whatever, so. So, yeah, it's, it was too much effort right now, like, to... Um, More <laughs> It's like an engine who doesn't start. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then the battery has to re recover a bit and... <laughs> yeah, maybe the battery should be empty anyway. Actually, it's very good sample, like, to try them. Yeah. It's very good sample. It's better than my question. <laughs> 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 and to drive, you put it in the It's much more better. Yeah, yeah. It's like the uh, same experience I had yesterday. Uh, trying to pull that forward and uh, cut my finger. <laughs> yeah, it's like a movie, cut. <laughs> There was one guy, it's an old thing, that, but if you find your original question, then it's like more uh, meditation, meditating on your original question, which is not hearsay, which is not conditioned, which is not whatever picked up somewhere, is it not whatever from some teachers or some books or some whatever. Just looking, is there any original question? And staying in that, just trying to find your original question. And you will not find one. You will try and try and there will be no, no question. Whatever you find is hearsay, is 
conditioned by something, picked up somewhere, parrot, you know, like a parody or par parroting something or whatever. So, try to find your original question, which is really your question, which is not stolen somewhere or picked up somewhere. And then you will be quiet, because you cannot find it. And then you rest maybe in that not finding your question. Because and then maybe you remain as that, uh, what you cannot question, because that you are. It's not a question. So this questionless natural state was there before, but not finding any question for that questionlessness. You just rest in that, because that is a pointer to your natural state. Everything else is just picked up somewhere and just stolen or put on you or anything. And that is unconditioned in itself. There is no conditioning possible. Everything else coming from a condition, from a circumstance, from being whatever. So, that's your homework now. <laughs> So failing again is the best what can happen. Failing to find your original question. Because you, you are the original who has no question. <laughs> so there is no... It's a very good point <coughs> to effortlessness. Yeah, yeah it's, it's effortless. A very natural point. <laughs> you, no, it's, that is like Ramana steering into the awareness of whatever, and then you find there is nothing what is yours. What you are has, no, is there is no ownership of anything, there is no my question. And when there is no question, there is no need for any answer. So no question, no answer, it's like a, and then still you are. Doubtlessness in itself. Your natural state was always there, so it's just like an imaginary dream, steering and picking up and stories and things. But if you really look into it, there is, you cannot find anything. So you cannot find anything what is yours. <coughs> and then you go become minimized. <coughs> you are the substratum which doesn't own anything. The total abstract who cannot be more abstracted. And by being the total abstract, you don't know anymore what you are. But by that absolute not knowing what you are, you don't even know what you are not. Because the knower cannot survive in that. In that knowledge there is no knower. So this is like getting rid of that idea that's, which comes always first and is last, which is just an idea, a knower, like a, which is already known or whatever. So that is this. another technique of who am I, but who am I is a bit always producing some results. That I, why I'm a bit. Some people don't fail in the world. They succeed. Yeah, but they take them self as the answer to the question. And then it becomes a personal. I am whatever. I am the prior. I am the beyond. But that word is. Prior would never call itself I'm prior. It doesn't even know what is prior and beyond, and not, doesn't even know what is now. But this little mind is always so tricky and so creative, even that it owns them. The ownership continues. Me being prior. <laughs> Another landing point. So, what to do? So, LA, last day? Yeah, it's my last day. It's bittersweet. Whoa. I can't wait to come home and I would still like to stay. Bittersweet chocolate. Yes. Yeah. Actually, my favorite. Um, I'm, I'm curious. Yesterday, um, I was wondering why you said you're not a spiritual teacher. And I know that's a phrase that's been tossed around lately a lot. Why not? A label. I'm just curious. Because I, how can I teach spirit something? Spirit is complete as it is. How can be a, I am a spiritual teacher? 
I have no idea. For me, the spirit in his nature is absolute as it is. I cannot put anything to it or take something away to that Holy Spirit. So how can I be a spiritual teacher? <laughs> what an arrogance. Yeah. Or how can I be a heart master? Mm. Imagine, some call themselves heart masters. Mm. They mastered their heart. Mm. What a poor heart. Mm. Wow. Who wants to be mastered by a master? And what heart can be mastered? Mm. Or what heart has to be opened? Mm. Only relative ideas <laughs> needs to be opened. And so relative ideas of a master trying to open a relative idea of heart. And I have no interest in anything. So in that sense I have I talk to that what is already knowledge itself and never needs to learn anything. How can I teach that something? But it's not only there. It's already there. That absolute understanding doesn't need more understanding. So I cannot take a gift, I don't give anything and I don't take anything away. I just talk to what I am. That's why I talk, this I call self-talks, not uh, whatever, master, disciple, tralala. This is eye to eye, call it self to self, entertainment. And this, if there is an absolute teaching is that you learn here that you can forget everything. But even that is too much. You could, but you don't have to. Because <coughs> nothing what you ever learned, whatever you experienced, made you more as you are or less. So what to do? So you cannot be more that what you are, or less what you are. And that what you are is that. But you will never know. But that is what you are. And to rest in that is peace. Everything else is ownership. Mm -hmm. All that knowledge, all that whatever relative experiences and deep insights is such shit ananda. Mm -hmm. Shit unlimited. Mm -hmm. Compared to the hit you are. Mm -hmm. so the hit and shit, that is always a nice thing. The ignorance and that and what is knowledge. Mm -hmm. So you look always in the place of ignorance for that what is knowledge. It's a joke. Knowledge looking in ignorance for what it is. But what to do? Huh? Just for fun or just in case again? Yeah, <laughs> yeah if, if you are what you are and it's just an entertainment, then it's fun. Then it's a fun tom. But if you expect something, then it becomes a sad anna. Sad anna, sad anna. It's a sad anna. <laughs> Ananda who is sad <coughs> is sad Anna. <coughs> or it's a fun Tom. Then you enjoy the fun Tom. Or you <laughs> sad Anna. So in expectation you are a sadness, there is a sad Anna, and in just meditation there is fun Tom. Having fun with Tom. So you cannot choose, but this is the two sides. So meditation with expectation and meditation without. That's the two sides. So the natural state is meditation maybe without any idea of harvesting or getting something out. And maybe the artificial one is expecting something. In this artificial meditator. In the presence of one who expects something, there's a meditator expecting something coming out. That is called sadhana. You have to meditate anyway, but you can have make it a fun tom or a sadhana. So when you are reality, you realize yourself as phantom. Because the realizer already is a phantom. Because the realizer, whatever he is doing or not doing, realizing himself, cannot that reality more or less as you are. Reality is absolute in spite of whatever this realizer is realizing or not. So the para Brahma is always prior whatever. But Brahma, the creator, is creating or not. Absolute has no no influence of that what is a para Brahma. So only the creator is concerned about his creation. But only the Brahma the Brahma is a phantom, like a 
sometimes there, sometimes not. If it were truly reality, it should be uninterrupted in a way. The only thing what is uninterrupted is what you are. So that what is never, never, never needs anything. <coughs> and that sometimes being, this maybe of a creator, always, just in case, needs something and has to create another whatever circumstance. Another problem. <sighs> My creation. I never satisfied with this creation. It's like a, the biggest sadhana is a being an artist and a painter or something. Because you're never satisfied with your paintings. The moment you're satisfied, you're not an artist anymore. So that is like a seeker, a prime seeker. So, oh, something more. What? In, in satisfaction there is no artist. Artist is only there when he is not satisfied. A seeker is only there when he is not satisfied. When there is satisfaction there is no seeker, nothing to this sort. <coughs> What, something? No. No? I just remembered uh, one of your paintings in your Mallorca house. Yeah? It was quite energetic. I just came and... Oh. Wow. I don't know. <laughs> in the, in the living room? I don't know, just uh, this... Uh, cross? Yeah, it's a cross. Oh. Yeah, that is... That's why I'm hiding it, because people are not ready for it. No. Because I already made a, some uh, transporting it, now I already has a hole, so... Once there was a nice picture, <laughs> now already has a hole inside. See, it's, even if it looks perfect and it's very, uh, ah, and then something happens that it destroys it or something. There is a fleeting beauty, fleeting perfection. Anyway, it's just whatever can be created will be gone one day. Every nice sunset, it's like a sunset, you cannot keep it. It will be gone the next moment. Hmm? Or a nice boyfriend. It's a perfect man. Who wants to have a perfect man? I think it would be hell for women. They have nothing to do anymore. <laughs> <laughs> what would women do if they cannot work on relationships? <laughs> they don't, they, women cannot relax. <laughs> women cannot relax. It's impossible. It's not in their nature. They have to work. It's workship. Workshipping, trying to make Adam perfect. <laughs> and they fail, but they try and try and try. <laughs> huh? It's like a, takes a man away and a, like why, why all these women stay with these imperfect assholes? Yeah. Huh? Confession. No. <laughs> There's just no failing. Is failing, failing. Yes, I try, but I try. It's like why do people, women stay with men who beat them up? It's like, because yeah. at least he shows he loves me. Then they, they find a reason to stay, they find something. Because at least they give, he gives me attention by all the things and whatever. It's amazing this, huh? Unbelievable. Even Stephen Hawkins, he found out the whole secrets of the universe. But he says, the only mystery which is left is my wife and my daughter. 
Everything else I figured out. <laughs> but the mystery of women, why women are like women are, and every day different. You can, you can never say you have the same woman in front of you. Impossible. It's always another one. Oh, who are you today? Oh, that one. <laughs> Oh, that side is very new. <laughs> variations, variations, very creative, I like the makeup. But back to spirituality. <laughs> Spirulina. Yeah, Uzbekis. Yeah. Uh, about uh, artists, uh, do you think is it possible for uh, an uh, artist to continue or if he became in a personal state continuously? Is it possible? Yeah, that's his goal, and, and, and some is like an in, informal art, they call it. They, you have to, the artist has to be gone, that art can happen. Okay. Everyone says that. Yeah. Then, then afterwards they say, yeah, it happened by itself. Every musician tells you that. Every good whatever says, when I play the guitar, there's no one who plays. It just plays me. Can we call this uh, state as inspiration? No, it's not inspiration. It's like, uh, like Tai Chi, when the universe moves you without one who is... It's like Wu Wei, it's like actionless action. It's like action without an actor. That is all material arts and all those things. Qigong or Tai Chi or Karate is all when there's a dad. The dad is acting, and there's no one there who's acting. Mm -hmm. That's called art, in every whatever, in everything. Even in speaking now, I call this tongue karate. <laughs> Very sharp knife. No, art is only there when there is no speaker and no listener. In all museums they try to put some pieces of art, but everyone has a different, whatever, trigger. So if you, if you stay in front of one painting, you may disappear. Then you call it art. Then you and the painting are not two. There's just a scene, and what is seen is not different. And then you disappear in it. That's called art. And for others, it's another one. For everyone has a trigger, like a code of perception. And that triggers that absence of uh, separation. So this kind of art can be useful for... It's not useful, it's just uh, switching from the separated to the non-separated experience. But it doesn't uh, bring anything. It's not that that is your natural state. It's just one side of your, the way of you realize yourself in oneness. So oneness and twoness, and both is as good or bad as it is. There's nothing more better or less good or something. But that is called art, we're talking about what we call art. And art is the absence of separation. But even the absence of separation is separated to the presence of separation. So it's still part of separation. You have to separate it. So yes, there is, but there is not. So, what to do? Otherwise you make it like an idol again, like an idealistic state, or you make it your role model, then everything compared to that is bad. That you are the master in it. You always make some state better than the other. That's called mind. Because you can only, in separation you can survive. So if art is better than this one, and oneness is better than twoness, then you survive as a me. Because you need that. You need definitions, defining it. The definer, which is a phantom definer, needs to define what is good and what is bad. What is whatever. What natural and unnatural. What is artificial and what is not artificial. What blah, blah, blah. So this real art can be for people, like, like same as meditation, as same state. Yeah. I have no idea. I, ne I never meditated. 
I have no idea. I'm not. In, you have to ask the meditation masters, which is a bullshit again. Master of meditation. <laughs> huh? Master beta maybe. <laughs> That's called the master of masturbation. <laughs> no, it's like. Why, do, why compare? What do what you think you get out of it if you find the similarities in something? Hmm? Then you think you can control it better? I'm just interested. Mm. Yeah, Don't lie to me. Don't lie to me. <laughs> <laughs> You're such a liar, huh? And I, I smell the lie the moment he opens his mouth. Oh, just for interest. <laughs> you should be red like a red light district now. <laughs> it's like a prostitute says, I have sex for fun. <laughs> it's a good, good analogy. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> no. You, whatever you try to do is control, believe it or not. You try to control your beloved, whatever you think it is. You try to own it, you try to control it, you try to whatever, because you fear it. You fear yourself and by that you try to control yourself. It's all trying to control your fear. And what to do with fear? Do what? What to do with fear? Don't ask me, I have no idea. You see, she wants to control it too. What to do with fear? <laughs> <laughs> Look at five. <coughs> Fear, five. No, I just point out where it comes from, what, what is permanently present. The lover wants to control the beloved. Good intention. I want to own my beloved. I want to be one with my beloved. I want to know it, in and out. Me. Oh, what a good intention. I am the lover and loving, caring about my beloved is my bread and butter of every moment. <laughs> So just don't, don't tell me you are just because you're interested. <coughs> Your interest is very deep. No, it's fear. You fear the self. It's, this is the biggest joke in all time. Fear, self-fearing self. What else is there to fear? Hmm? So what is a self-fearing self? Fear of discomfort. No, no. Self-knowing self is fearing self, because self-knowing self is two, at least two selves too many. There are two selves. Self who knows self. And there is two selves. God knows God. And then God <laughs> tries to control the other God, because he doesn't know what the other God will, may do or not do. Because something is doubtful. So he himself is a doubtful existence, and then fearing the other doubtful existence, but just in case he tries to control the other one. There's fear instantly when God knows God. God fears God when God knows God. <coughs> so that's the root of everything. There the jealousy comes from, there comes fear, there comes all what you can know. It's all the fear, the root is fear. God fearing God. Do you experience fear? Do what? Do you experience fear sometimes? I, when I see you, yes. Any other places? When I see when I see her too. When I see any woman, they do. Then I then I there is angst. <laughs> then I'm really anxious. Then I see look at all my wrinkles and bingles. And when you saw the snake? There was no fear. No fear? There was just reaction. If I would have fear, I said yesterday, I would be paralyzed. Fear is paralyzing. But I reacted, this body reacted, I cannot say I reacted. 
Like every, every word I speak here, you think I, if I would fear it, what to, that I say something wrong here, I could not sit here. Because I, whatever I say is wrong. <laughs> no, I can just pre present the fearlessness of meditation. What can happen if no one comes back here? I try very hard sometimes that I offend everybody that no one may come back. Look, I fail all the time. But since I began, I tried to offend everybody. And talking dirty and low and all of that, nothing worked. <laughs> <laughs> so many F words I used and shit and thing. And look, in spite of that, you have to sit here. Huh? No, fear will always be there. How, what, how could this, whatever is, this, <coughs> survive without fear? Hmm? God cannot, the, the phantom God cannot survive without fear. In the fearlessness there is no God, no creation, no universe, nothing what is, you can even name. Hmm? <laughs> so what about fear? <laughs> I don't know what. I no, you have. I, I just can only say you have to be in spite of that fear, what you are, because you cannot get rid of it. There will always be a false evidence appearing real. That's called fear. But I have fear. Attention. You have, There is fear, but don't don't take ownership. That's all. There's fear, so what? Whose fear is it anyway? It's a fear of life. Life owns everything already. What is yours anyway? Huh? What is yours? Show me one thing, what is yours? Fear. Not even fear belongs to you. <laughs> no, fear is mine. <laughs> you greedy bastard, you. <laughs> Sometimes I would say, greed maybe it's yours, but even that is not yours. Fear. Not fear, even fear. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's the main, the ownership shit, tralala. So if you just drop mine, <laughs> who cares about fear? Who cares about who's fear and who's not fear, whatever? It's just mine, this mind, this little mind, this. This minor mining. Ah. And how to drop it? What? Mine. Yeah, then you want to be owner an owner of no mind. <laughs> so I can never drop it. You, by being what you are, <laughs> there is there was never any mind because by being what you are, you are, you are the absolute owner of what is life itself. You're just now claiming to have little things. You play with peanuts. The drop the mind is just being what you are, and that is life itself. Then you are the absolute owner, but not this little pitiful bullshit owner, having a little bullshit body and a bullshit peanut somewhere. <coughs> Here. <laughs> Peanuts. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> It's not that you lose something. When you are what you are, you, you are that. Come on, whatever. You don't know what you are and what you're not anymore. There's no possibility of little peanuts. You don't know where you start and where you end. That's the light of Shiva. Now you have a little border. Oh, my little skin and it's my border, my little uh, atmosphere here. I'm a little stinker, I'm stinking for myself. I'm a little stunk. Now I'm stinking. <laughs> but when you are the, the best analogy, now you believe you are, you are a little asshole. But I tell you, you are the absolute one. There's many holes. But the asshole itself doesn't 
smell itself. It needs another asshole who smells the first asshole. But if you are the one and only asshole ever, was and will be, pfft. what to do? Hmm? And no way out. Because your reality realizing itself in many tastes and smells and whatever you can smell. Even the, the smeller is a smell, the taster is a taste. You taste the taster, you taste whatever can be tasted. But that what is tasting everything can never be tasted. So what? And you are that. And you cannot less taste yourself. You have to taste yourself in all possibilities and impossibilities. You have to experience yourself as an experiencer, experiencing himself in whatever. You cannot miss one little aspect of this dream, of this absolute dream of yourself. <coughs> you cannot partly manifest. Hmm? But you want to have a preference manifestation. Like only when I feel good manif manifestation, blissful and beautiful. Hmm? And fearless. I want to be fearless manifested. Hmm? Why not fearful manifested? Fearful, fearless, does it matter? If it's that way or that way? Hmm? Yes, for me. Oh, because I want to be fine all the time. I'm so horrible. And because you want to be fine, you are fucked. <laughs> By being what you are, you are the finest ever. Nothing is finer than being what you are. You are that is fine art, not knowing art, what is and what is not art. <coughs> and not this little artist who, who plays with little, my little, my little. Hmm? Good. So you always have to paint. It's pain. You cannot only have bliss. There is as much pain as bliss and everything. Back pain, front pain. Solar plexus pain. The what? Solar plexus. You have solar plexus pain? Yes, especially <laughs> when I have a lot of fear, when I talk to you, I have solar plexus. <laughs> that's, not, that's not fear, that's energy jumping. It's not pleasant anyway. For you not, but... <laughs> Should I care about you or the solar plexus? I don't know, but I care. Huh? I care about the solar Yeah, but should I, should I care that you care? Yes. Yes? I don't know. Oh, okay. Why do you, why you think it's called solar plexus? Why do you think it's called solar plexus? Why did Ramana say, everyone, when he is asked who did it or what is what you are, no one says, I am here. Everyone, who was it? I was it. Pointing to that solar plexus or whatever, this little center, hmm? energy center. So what is jumping then when I talk to it? Yeah, it's not pleasant. It's, it's not meant to be pleasant. It will kick your ass. <laughs> no, it's a side effect. If, if I talk to that what I am, it just wakes up in that, and then the solar plexus jumps. It's like when you have a deep of understanding or something is really harmonic, then it jumps. Then it comes like a little <laughs> from there. Because then it's like a little, air, like a heartquake. So the heart, which is what you are, has a little quake, like, ah, reaction to it. Not here, you don't have a, qu a quake in your brain, you have a quake in your center. So the center wakes up in it, which is normally pff, uh, like a dead matter there. But when you lit it up again, then it becomes, bah, yes, oh, oh. And somewhere they are all, all the time, oh, 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 oh. I don't know what they understand, but... <laughs> So it's a little heartquake in your system, like the, the light inside, it's like a little whatever God particle which is then jumping. And then it's like a resonance, the whole resonance field is getting. So if I talk directly to that word, it's a God particle which is like that one and only God soul, 
then the soul is happy. And when the soul is happy, it jumps. And then it's not so pleasant for the little unhappy bastard you think you are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But that is meant to happen. But it will kick you out. Just by being what it is. So if God has fun, if the self <laughs> has fun, it <laughs> that's I don't say anything more. <laughs> Then there is a party, but you were not invited. <laughs> no, I tell you, you can stay because the party will be with you or without you. You better you enjoy the party. <coughs> this is your party. <coughs> so what to do? No, it's I have many people have the side effects of whatever. It's a point of understanding. If the knowledge just gets direct, activated, then it gets this energetic quakes. What to do with it? Yeah, just enjoy it. Rain seeds. It's what? Rain seeds. Huh? <laughs> what? Car rains, then these side effects cause rain seeds. Rain seeds? Yes, from rains. Okay. Car rains, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I have, I'm, I'm, uh, I have, yeah, this, yeah. I have this, this ability. Yeah, I don't like explanation am, about jokes. It's I'm, not easy to understand for yeah, me. Yeah. <laughs> Rancism. <laughs> no, many is like it when, when Andrew says that afternoon has is a whatever experience is all that if that wakes up, like Ramana called it the initiation of... If that is initiated, it takes its own course. And then it's active. And then sooner or later this little whatever you believe to be will be gone anyway. Because that's the only thing that counts. And to count you down. It's like a countdown of the rocket who wants to... Good. It is not pleasant, I know, but it's not meant to be pleasant. Aching. What is better, aching or a aging? <laughs> <laughs> they are the same. <laughs> they are the same. No, no. no. <laughs> Aging is bliss and aching. Good, Uzbekistan. Some complaints? <laughs> absolute complaint. The absolute complainer. Mm -hmm. Always complaining. Never good enough. Oh, Switzerland. Something? You wrote you could go to Kerala again or something? Yeah. Vedanta? Yeah, there's a teacher there. No, I always, I always like that. Uh, Vedanta, the Vedanta teachers, they, they have this, they twisted it around. They said Vedanta leads to Advaita, to the non duality. Like they, try, they think they can be taught or whatever. It's like a Vedanta idea from Vedanta teachers or masters. When I was in Rishikesh, I had some, many of the students came and I had to hammer on them. Because they really changed the whole thing, because normally it's, it's said Advaita Vedanta. But they turn it, they make it Vedanta Advaita. So they believe that you can, in the realization, you can realize reality. But normally Advaita is reality and Vedanta is the realization of it. So at Vedanta normally is the nature where Vedanta starts, knowledge ends. And when Vedanta ends, knowledge starts. That's the nature of Vedanta. 
But everyone takes it like, oh, Vedanta is the end of ignorance, maybe, they say, or knowledge which can be known. No, but Advaita is knowledge. And then Vedanta is the realization of that knowledge. <coughs> but turning it around is a teacher's idea. That reality can be taught, or reached, or attained by Vedanta. Yeah, that's, that's the confusing part. Like, if I come here, it's a, pretty much a contrast program. To the opposite, that. actually, totally yeah, opposite, yeah. 180 degrees. And of course, I, I feel better here in a way because it's totally relaxing and all. You don't have to do anything, and you don't need more uh, sattvic qualities and less rajasic qualities yeah. and less tamasic qualities. No, tamasic. tamasic is a word. The Buddhist, the Buddhist too, too. And then he agrees, yes, it's, it's not the old type of control that you learned in school and from your parents and all that. But, but then they call it Purusharta or something. You, you have a certain place of willpower, I mean, of free will. Ah, certain. Yeah, and really. it's there, but nobody can, nobody can show it to you how you can access it, actually. Mm -hmm. And there you are, you never, again, never feel good enough, you know. You always no, I like it actually because you always fail. The yeah. standard is so high, you always fail. It could be that that's his goal too. I, I still don't understand if, if he's if he's serious about it. If that he or if yeah if if he whatever knows about that technique or is just doing his job. No, he's not actually a mere teacher. He's he he's supposed to be. Uh, he has arrived where he's supposed to. Here, right? <laughs> that sounds already something. He arrived. Yeah, I cannot talk about this. No, but I, I can. No, I no, sense. I, I, I sense it. He arrived. Yeah, definitely. Yes. So yeah. there are people who had never departed, and there are people who arrived. Well, he, he is very good in words too. I mean, it would be great if the two of you would be hang <laughs> out. So. <laughs> Maybe we would just have fun. Yeah, maybe. I have no idea. I don't know who it is and whatever. It's like I got, as I, before, in the beginning I always attacked Osho about his technique and then and later I said, oh, existence knows best. Whatever. Who am I to decide what is good and bad? Right. That, that's <coughs> my position. I just can't get rid of the doubts that keep coming when I'm away from him. When I'm there, these doubts magically sort of melt away. No, it's overpowering you. Yeah, something is yeah. overpowering you. <coughs> it's and a then, technique. Then, then I'm in that mode and I sort of go along with it. But no, I don't. That's why I never tell people what to do, if they should go or not go. Because I have absolutely no idea what is good and bad in that, or what is right for anyone. <coughs> it's only saying if it's your way, you have to do it anyway. Anyway. You have to do to be on the way. Yeah. Anyway. As long as it sort No, it's not as long. There will always be. The way is a goal. This is like you are lived by life like that, and this is like the next, what happens. Mm. You cannot avoid it. Even trying to avoid, you suffer about it. Not trying, it's not even that is in your hand. Because there's yeah. avoiding or not avoiding. In not avoiding, you, you go with it, like you go with the flow, and, and avoiding, you go against it, and then you're exhausted. Or you are fresh and going with it. But even that is not in anyone's hand. So life is living everyone different. The teachers and everything, it's, it's all life living itself in infinite whatever. So I never doubt that or say this is right or wrong or something. But if you ask me if that would, by whatever you do or this or this way, whatever life is living itself, life becomes more or less, I say no. And your nature is that what is life. And by all the different ways of living itself, life doesn't get more or less. So enjoy the right. Whatever, Vedanta right or this one. So I'm, I'm not even saying Advaita, Advanta is right, or more right than Vedanta and Advaita, but both, both is wrong, in a way. What to do? But he says, 
that, that there is a place where all that disappears, I mean, a no place where you seem to say this never stops. Actually, yeah. yeah. But he says for him or for that what he it never speaks started. from, it, yeah, it, it, it is not there. He, he doesn't perceive yeah, but to say, the mind world. If you say it's not there, it's still there. Because you can only say it's not there when you can confirm that there is something that is not there. Yeah. It's a trick. The one who sees ever, everything as an illusion, himself is an illusion. So who cares about if an illusion sees something else as an illusion? Other illusions care about if that, that one who sees everything as an illusion as an illusion is, is my illusion better than your illusion or my whatever. My seeing deeper as in the illusion as you are seeing deep into the illusion is all part of the dream. It has to be. All these ideas of departure, arriving, whatever, never departed, never being, it's all part of the dream. You know that. Yeah. And you cannot stop the dream. The dream continues. Being arrived or not. And the arrived masters say, they were, when they never existed as the unarrived masters or disciples, all of that is dream, dream masters and dream disciples and dream action and dream uh, goals and dream whatever. For me, it, I'm quite happy that there was never anyone who was unenlightened and out of that absolute absence of anyone who was unenlightened, no one became enlightened. So for me, the whole drama of enlightenment is just a joke. Because there, is no, there, was, never, there was life, there is life and there will be life. And life is neither enlightened nor not enlightened. And the only what is worth being is that what is life. The rest is bogus. And even then you say, I'm not alive, you have to be alive. You, you have to be what you are to say, I'm not alive or I'm not. So even that you can make a mistake, you have to be. That absolute being you cannot not be, that's all. So enjoy yourself. Because whatever you do or don't do in this dream is stupid. I agree, it's all stupid. But what to do? Trying to, t trying to stop it to be stupid is more, even more stupid. Yeah, that, that's, that's the crux <laughs> somehow. Yeah. If you're told you should try to uh, improve in one way or another. You confirm that you are imperfect. Yeah. yeah. Well, they speak of two levels. Oh. They, they speak of the absolute, like you did just now, and then they say that at that level, of false identification with body mind is also treated in order to <coughs> be changed, I think, to become so subtle that it's more likely to be to disappear somehow as a concept. Oh, it's a promise. Yeah, it's a that's <laughs> it's a promise, yes. Yeah. But and you don't know, and just and, and in just in case you, you go for it. Because you don't you don't know anything better. Yeah, but then it's in time again. Of course, it's, 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 always, it's all whatever will happen will be in time. Even no time is in and, time. And you never know, you may definitely not make it, make it in this lifetime. Then you need another concept of next lifetime, <laughs> past lifetimes and all that. That's yes. also used there, all these things. That's why I say you try to, uh, to reach the end of the light of Shiva. You get more and more subtle, but you will never uh, find the end of subtle, 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 subtle. subtle. <laughs> There's always be what is prior to that, what, what is prior. Because you will, you always make it another concept. You go back, 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 back. Then that one, the master of the prior, is prior to the prior. And that what is beyond, I'm beyond the beyond. All this words and thing and all that claiming and thing. I'm even beyond the beyond. I am blah, blah, blah. I will, I will reach even that state. Like Adi John. I reach the only one ever reached the seventh state. Me. No, I think on, on, that, on that point, that there's, there's not a the doubt, it's not there, that absolute thing that cannot be spoken about, in fact, even if it, people still speak about it. But, but for me, the, the, problem, the, the question is, is there anything to be done with this identified, personalized Yeah, uh, whatever, whatever will be done, will be done to this, whatever. No, I mean to improve, to... Yeah, it will improve, it will improve to die. Yeah. It's meant to die, it's, that's for sure. But it cannot die because it's already dead. 
That's a whole problem with this phantom yeah, life. It's never real. It cannot, it cannot die because it was never alive. So to try to kill something what is not even alive. It's fantastic, yeah? But just in case, because it moves, you believe what moves is alive. Sounds good. Try harder. Maybe thousands of thousands of lifetimes you try to kill yourself and this time it's just another attempt to kill yourself. Killing something what is already dead. You always try to kill something what is already dead. You want to get rid of that knowledge. You want to kill no, the ignorance, because, but ignorance is already dead knowledge. So what to do with it? No, I, when I speak, I speak from that, but the reality has to realize itself in whatever way. The absolute dream of the Parabrahma cannot decide how he dreams himself. This helplessness, I would call reality. Reality, not knowing reality, has to realize itself in all possible ways. And you are that. That what is the very self, the absolute. That's the only absolute way out of that idea that something has to be improved or anything. The rest is whatever, working on the side effects like a doctor who tries to heal somebody who is already dead. Yeah, that's like the teachers, they try to blow some corpses, blowing into a corpse and, and thinking they have become alive by blowing into them, something. Yeah, at the same time saying they, they are not real, and still they work with, the, with, with these unreal phantoms. I mean, what a contradiction. How can you talk to yourself when there is no time, no, no, no dream of separation. How can you even interact with yourself? It has to be a dream interaction, a dream connection, a dream whatever. How can you experience yourself without being the experience of separation? This is just a natural way of experiencing yourself, realizing yourself. There's nothing right or wrong with it, yeah. in whatever way. So there are many, whatever, and do things happen by themselves, and anyway, as they already happened, before they happen, what to do with it? And going to teachers and listening and going to school, we all had to go to school and were bored by the teachers, and still we had to go, because what to do? <laughs> and they all tell you, this is for your life, and you know it's not for my life. <laughs> They all tell you you learn for life. I said, well, what fucking life needs to learn something here? No. <laughs> so, in spite that you know a relationship is shit, you could go to the next one. So, why not? In spite of knowing waking up in the morning, it's bullshit. Why waking up? For what? Why not keep asleep? Can you, sh can you change it? You wake up anyway. That's why Buddha called it the divine accident, waking up. All of this is a divine accident. It's all by accident. The Parabrahma never, never had the wish to start dreaming. In the Parabrahma there is nothing like a wish or a tendency. There's a wishlessness of absolute existence. By, by accident you can say it started to realize or dream itself. And from that on it was all done already, because the Absolute in its Absolute potential already contains everything. <coughs> the Absolute dream is already dreamt before the Parabrahman even started dreaming. It was already done. Whatever happens, already happened, before it happens. So what to do? And just whatever body has a certain tralala, beginning and end, but what that is what, experiencing that whatever, there is no beginning or end in anything. So what to do with it? There will always be the next, and the next, and the next. For what you are, you cannot stop dreaming. And the idea of the dreamer that he can avoid to dream is misery. Control. Because what you would like to control, controls you. It always comes together. 
If you want to have knowledge, knowledge controls you. And whatever you can have is relative knowledge, and then you become relative by trying to own relative knowledge. Fantastic, yeah? What a trap. Who can make this perfect trap? Hmm? Only the absolute can be the absolute trapper. Trapping and trap itself. In this absolute trap of itself. But who cares about being trapped by oneself? If there is no other, never was, never will be. So I'm absolutely trapped in what I am. And I'm absolutely addicted to what I am. I cannot, I'm the absolute junkie, a junkie for myself. And I'm absolute addict. And I cannot get enough from it. In spite of being absolute satisfied, there's an absolute satisfaction, <laughs> I, I still take the drug of myself. Just for fun. But that very conviction that all this is, in that sense, the, <coughs> the perfection as such... Cannot, be, cannot, by, cannot come by understanding. Yeah. And, and, and without that conviction... Because that it never went away by understanding. It never went away. away. The knowledge of what you are never went away by understanding, so it cannot get back by understanding. So there's a, in the beginning there's a misunderstanding and by another misunderstanding it cannot be undone. Yeah. It never needs to be undone. But, but every understanding is a misunderstanding. Especially the understanding that you are. This first I understanding, the first awareness is a misunderstanding. That I am. The, the, or it is the I. The pure I, the pure notion of I, of awareness, all it is that is what? The purest notion as an experience of existence is the root thought I, and from there on everything springs. But all it is that is false. So if the beginning is false, whatever next comes is false too. Right. But because it comes out of it, yeah, it, it, it's the origin of something else, so there's a, the beginning of separation. So you say nothing needs to be done with it because it's, it's as it's supposed to be, in a way. I would say everything is already done before it even happens. There's absolutely no doership in anything because nothing is ever done or not done. Everything is like a block of life. And in this block of life or existence there's no coming and no going. So in this dream of coming, nothing comes, and the dream of going, nothing goes. So if, if in that, in the, if your understanding is that movement is life, this misunderstanding continues. And the first motion, the first notion and motion of awareness, the purest light experience, what it is that you call stillness, is too much movement for what you are. So even the silence, or whatever you call stillness, is movement for what you are. Because for what you are there is not even awareness, or anything that you can name and frame. That you will never know, but that is what you are. And the rest is just because you wake up, awakeness, awareness. But what is that is what? The beginning of the dream. So the beginning of the dream, you didn't start because you were already were before the dream starts and when the dream will end you are still what you are. So whatever hap will happen in this dream has absolutely no influence of what you are. So it can never condition you in any way. It never leaves any spot on what you are. Nothing can be whatever. Change your absolute nature. But by being that you cannot stop dreaming yourself. You are the Parabrahma, the absolute dreamer, so how can you stop dreaming? But by no, now you're trying to stop the dream, you become a relative dreamer. That's fantastic. Eh? The trap out of love, you want to stop your discomfortable dream. Out of love. So love is quite a trap. And how can you not love yourself? Try to not love yourself. Even that trying not to love yourself is out of love. So whatever happens, happens out of love. And this is the biggest trap. The love for yourself. 
the one and only trap, which everything comes from. This self-love. This is a hard knot, which is always like giving you pressure. This passion, hard knot, burning thing inside your chest. So how to end that? <laughs> you try, everyone tries by meditation to become nothing, because as nothing you slip away maybe. You don't exist, then I'm free of it. So you want to kill yourself, you want to become nothing. Hmm? Is that why the masters tell you are nothing? Because as nothing you cannot be whatever. There is no belt of nothing around nothing. Nothing is nothing is nothing is nothing. So the absence is better than the presence. So that's the, that's the first pre preference of God. God is better off without God. That would be the consequence. God not knowing God is bliss. God knowing God is pain. So presence is discomfort and absence is comfort. This is the two sides. Paradise and hell, or heaven and hell. So what is the preference then of the lover for his beloved, for himself? Absence. Or not? Well, I, I lost you. <laughs> <laughs> you should have lost yourself, <laughs> not me. You can lose me, but not yourself. Huh? No, this is the first whatever where separation starts, the preference, the first preference, which is an awareness. Awareness prefers absence. As a, if it goes into seeking? No, it goes into preference. The preference is absence, because the absence, there is no God, no self, no me, no you. You can call it oneness. Absence. Absence of separation, absence of form, the formless absence. No form, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit. And then the presence is the unholy spirit, experiencing its <laughs> separation. So discomfort, having a body, having some weight, having whatever. Discomfort, being born, all what comes with these ideas of tralala. Presence, that's called presence. The presence of God is discomfort. The absence of God, God not knowing God, not knowing is absence of God, it's comfort. And the presence of God, God knowing God, is discomfort. In these two ways, in this polarity, this is the beginning of polarity. And there you realize yourself from. This is from awareness, it comes as these two sides, the light of Shiva and then the form and the non-form, or the whatever. This is the trinity. Shiva in awareness, the light of Shiva being formless and form. Non-vibrating and vibrating. And in vibrating is an experience of discomfort of separation. You can say, like this, the only one words. And then sometimes it is personal and sometimes impersonal. So even if it's impersonal in the vibration, you are already better off. So we have a preference. Impersonal comes from here because there is no difference. Total impersonal absence of me and you. There is no others. So it's a preference. But it needs one. The awareness God who has an advantage. This is the first advantage. And I agree, it's an advantage not to know yourself. Not knowing oneness it's an advantage for, but for who? There has to be an I. There has to be one who has a preference. And this preference comes off an advantage. And I agree, it's an advantage for, this is a disadvantage to know yourself. An advantage not to know yourself. But then there is one who needs that advantage. So it is a dream advantage. A dream disadvantage, a dream advantage from that first dreamt dreamer. It's already a dreamt creator, a dreamt I. But that where it comes from, that where it is hard, there is no such thing as preference or advantage. So that absolute advantage is being what you are, which is in any circumstance what it is. 
never needs anything to be what it is. Neither absence nor presence or anything, which is always in spite of whatever is and is not. That never needs to be even aware to be. But this first needs to be aware to be. This awareness I, this so famous awareness I, which is, I agree, is like a total, like quite a good advantage to be absolute, to be identified with awareness. It's quite an advantage. But it needs one who has that advantage. And needs that advantage. You cannot make the absolute life needing an advantage of being aware. Can you? You can. Because many do it. So you make even the absolute relative. Huh? You even claim that the absolute needs a relative advantage to be what? Happy? Does happiness to be hap need to be happy? Yes, I would agree. There is more happiness in absence than in presence. There is more joy in absence than in <coughs> presence. I would agree, okay. But what is more or less is what? Relative. So what, uh, what is worth being is that. And this is treasure in that is being that. Not knowing it. There is no ownership in it. So being hard is what? Neither knowing or not knowing what is hard. Because there is no knower in it. In that knowledge no knower can survive. In that, there is all that what can be the survival system of one who is shifting between all the different ways of seven seas of sailing and failing. That's it. That's the Vedanta here, the whole Vedanta step. Even the idea of the Advaita is only in that. Jnanis, Jnana, all name, whatever you can give a name, is all in that seven states in the dream, in that there is no such thing as heart. Not even a word for heart. But, but in a way, this, for me, that is like, a, like the theory I may follow to some extent. And no, I say, this is not theory. This is actually fact. Okay, I may that also you are, believe. That, may no, also it's not a belief. Believe you believe it's a fact. No, no, no. You, that you are, you, even by denying that you are, you are. This fact you always miss. Even if you say, I'm not, you have to be. So that yeah. what you are is in spite of all your bullshit ideas and concepts, not because of your yeah. deep understanding or anything. So that is fact, and that is satisfaction. It's fact that you are. So as you are, even that there can be a dreamer, you have to be. And if there can be no dreamer, you have to be. That you can deny, but even that you can deny it, you have to be that. And even if you say, I don't know that, you have to know what you don't know, not to know that. Now you do as if you try to escape that, to make it a belief system, but you are just fucked by yourself. Little excuses to be stupid again, that you try to do. Because you think, you, I need my little fun still. Maybe I cannot have some enjoyment in this little life if I really accept that, to be what I am, which never needs anything. You fear nothing more than that, that what never fears anything. Because in that fearlessness you cannot survive as a little fearful bastard you believe now to be. So you rather go to some teacher who tells you you have to do something than just be what you are. <laughs> and everyone is a master of excuses. Maybe, maybe later when I go really deep into the matter, maybe later, maybe then, and maybe then when I reach that and that, and maybe then, maybe then. Yeah, if you like, go for it. You think I have an advantage if you go further? No, I tell you, I... I <laughs> See, always the one who I'm speaking to is blank. The other ones, they understand. <laughs> the birds understand. No, it's a phenomenon. The moment I look at someone, speak to him, he gets blank. And the other one, oh, oh, oh. <laughs>
What can I do? I, sometimes if I want to speak to someone, I, I talk to that side. <laughs> I know this is like, really quite a... Oh, I should close my eyes and... <laughs> Nice. Uh, <laughs> oh, come on, close it. It's closed. It's not closed. Kill it. No, no, Throw no. it out of the window. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. No, it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> it's like he can. It's possible for him to destroy him out of the window. <laughs> but you are more in love with your bloody and mobile than with yourself. If you really would be interested in yourself, you just would just throw it out. Fuck it all, huh? My little mobile, I don't know how to kill it. I don't know how to make it quiet. My little mind, I want it to be quiet, but I don't find the button. You don't claim again that you're interested in yourself. You're interested in some comfort of a mobile that your girlfriend can call you. More than in yourself. Fuck it all, huh? That I, st that I still talk to these guys. I'm amazed about myself. The selfish bastards. Egoistic, centric, tralalas. <laughs> <laughs> His little peanuts counting. And I have to, maybe 20 years more to live and I have to count how many money I made. <laughs> What do I need and where do I live? And all, 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 all. There's a little Dutch inside. <coughs> uh, isn't that good? Fantastic. Uh -huh. You count the hair you lose from your hair from your head in the cum, you count how bold, bold, soon I will be bold. <laughs> it's more important than anything else in that moment. You're fucking with Dante, right? Oh, fuck, fuck it, Dante. But my hair, I lose my hair. <laughs> my little mobile, I don't know how to handle it. <laughs> it's fucking amazing, huh? If you fall in love with your little bloody hair and your little thing and, oh, I, I lost my fingernail. Oh, the people cry for that. I would. Some men too. <laughs> In San Francisco I saw men crying about losing a fingernail. Dressed as a cowboy. <laughs> <laughs> On Mardi Gras. It's, humanity is such a fantastic joke. Huh? And love really is the biggest trap ever that you so in love with your little tralalas and my haircut today and my makeup and my lipstick. <laughs> Samba Eli, they cry when the president of the ashram is not saying hello. <laughs> because yesterday he said hello and today not. What's wrong today? What have I done? And then you look, oh, that Arunachal doesn't love me anymore. The president doesn't say hello. And the doctor made the face. <laughs> he always makes a face. <laughs> you can be so pitiful, huh? But what, what, does, what does that mean? It means nothing. Does it make you less? So be pitiful. Oh, whining. It's a nice word, yaman in German, but it's in English called yammering. <laughs> yammering. It's the same word. Yammering. Always yammering about poor me, poor me. Ah, ah. Yammering the whole day. Ah. I have no ring. I have yammering. I need a ring. No one marries me. Oh, I'm yammering. I'm yammering. Am I not worse to be married? No. No one fucks me today. Not tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> and, 
then you come from, and then suddenly they talk about oneness and the universe and universal love and thing, and they're all sitting there, Bachan singing, and oh, Shanti, 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 <laughs> my fingernail, my fingernail. <laughs> Shanti, 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 Palala. <laughs> what the power of attention, huh? If you give attention and you say, well, my little and my big one. My oneness and my little finger there. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> and all that can, you cannot avoid. Fantastic, yeah? And all of that doesn't make you more or less as you are. Isn't it great? Wow, you can be so grand, generously ignorant and pitiful and still you are what you are. <gasps> Micey and fascistic as a German. But really it made me a bit pissed that even so-called awakened ones are what they are. <laughs> <laughs> I said, shit, that's really not fair. They should not be. No. Even arrogant bastards as awakened ones are. Enlightened ones believe they realize their true nature. Even as arrogant bastards, they are what they are. It's not fair. Or is it fair? It's unbelievable, huh? Arrogant Napoleons waiting for Josephine, Josephine. Life is not fair. <laughs> Even Hitler was what was what he was. Is that fair? Even Hillary Clinton. <laughs> it goes as far as Hillary. It's hilarious. <laughs> What a bummer, Obama. <laughs> Boy. And if America get a Reagan as president, that would absurd. Huh? Yeah, so if you wait for fairness, you will never get it. Because some so called, you, 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 oh, I'm a seeker, I'm, I'm not worth it, and I, I play this little one and thing. Neither it works, that way or that way. Who's more arrogant? The one who doesn't want to be arrogant on places, one, or the one who is just arrogant? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good. Oh, you're going further away. The solar plex, maybe. Complexus. Yes, complexus. Something? No? L.A., last day. Yes. Yeah. It's not fair, huh? Oh, no, it's perfectly fair. No. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? It's absolutely not fair. Why not? Come on, if we have a counselor, a lady, if she is what she is, it's not fair. <laughs> <laughs> if this lady is not. If that is, even that is a self, no. <laughs> then my belief system collapses. <laughs> Crazy, huh? Mass murderers and all of that. One who never meditated, that's not fair. One who never spent one second being looking for truth. That's, there should be no, there's no advantage for anyone. That's not fair. All my work for nothing. All my good behavior. I could have so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> All my organic food for nothing. <laughs> All my rupees I gave to the beggars for nothing. 
But I could have done so many bad things. Yeah, I could have so much fun. But I didn't do because of karma, etc. Of karma? Yes. No, because you were you 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 you, you just in case you were good because otherwise you would be punished. Yes. That's why you try to be good. For fear of punishment. And if I'm not good, maybe I, I don't make it. I don't know what, but I imagine I, I don't make it. I don't know what I will not make, but just in case, I'll be good. Hmm? And I learn something, and I read Vedanta, I read all the scriptures, and I will be very scholared. At the last shirt has no pockets, they say in Germany. All the treasures you, like Dagobert, swimming in your own golden understandings, deep insights, all washed away for nothing. Is that fair? And you have to begin to be naked. Yeah. No, say hello to your teacher. <laughs> I, I'm so, I tell you, I'm so bad. I, I sometimes I would, I, I always think like there would should be lightning coming from something. I always wait for it. <laughs> On your yeah, like chang hitting me or something. I try really hard to offenses, so or God so whatever thing. You know. <laughs> so good. So what do you bring back to the angels? Just myself. It's already there, you don't have to bring it. Okay. <laughs> I'm good. I'll just take my body on the plane. Yeah, the plane takes all the job. Mm -hmm. Energy moves you. It's amazing that one has never, never done anything. <laughs> In spite of all the stories and all that, mm -hmm. it all happened by itself. Mm -hmm. Every movement, every thought came by itself. Mm -hmm. Every notion. Mm -hmm. Shit. Mm -hmm. It's not mine. Fuck. Mm -hmm. I neither can be proud or ashamed for what I have not done. Hmm? Mm -hmm. That's the beauty of it. If you're if you cannot have any pride about anything, there is no shame either. No mm -hmm. So, if you drop one, the other drops with it. If you can. Oh, catch me if you can. The self is always... Good, but nothing else? Okay. Then we go further. Something there? No. You're from? Um, the States. States. California. From, from my state. Car California. <laughs> 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 my first talk was in Carlsbad. Uh. The first ever talk in California was in Carlsbad. Uh. <laughs> it fit. It really fit. And then San Diego and then LA. Are you coming to the States anytime soon? Do you have any plans? Not, no plan, no. Okay. But I may. Okay. Seems like it's unavoidable. 1980 I went first and then every time I fly back to Europe or somewhere I say never again. <laughs> yeah, but, but when I say never again, the next year I will be there for sure. Mm -hmm. So it's a, the best way to go back. To say never again. <laughs> like India, never, India, yeah, never yeah, again. Never again. <laughs> <laughs> where well, you sit? <laughs> it's already like a, okay, I will be there again because never again means again. <laughs> because God never knows never. Again? Okay, again. <laughs> no way. Really. You come to Moscow? No plan. 
the superpowers as a sandwich to Putin or to Obama, what's better? No, I was living in San Francisco for one year, 80, painting. Wow. And I learned my English a little bit from Perry Mason. <laughs> <laughs> Perry Mason is a good show to have English, like, and, and the timing and witnesses and things. And then one hour later, where all my children started. <laughs> <laughs> so English, English to the really something. So you had both ways. Yeah. <laughs> the longest run show ever in America, huh? all my children. Yeah. It's still running or not? Oh yeah, I yeah. think so. General, General Hospital will not <laughs> win. <laughs> so you're from San Francisco or from? Uh, Manchester. Manchester, no. yeah. I was, yeah, it's a nice mountain. It's like the magnetic field, like here in a way. Mm -hmm. Like red and full of iron, magnetic, the clouds always clustering around. Mm -hmm. Oh, I like it there. Mm -hmm. tiger, tiger meadow, very magical. It's a lot nice things. Power spots. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, Mount Chester. Yeah, they say it's like a twin or like a power. That's a twin to the Roman Tower? They say, yeah, it's yeah. like oh, a. Oh, really? I didn't know that. In, in Peru, there is something, and then here, but you go to like. The energy is quite similar. Oh, okay. But I've never been. Oh, well, it's not so far from me, by the way. Not bad. No, 1,500 feet. I had to fly halfway across the world to come here and stuff. Yeah. It started drive five hours. Five hours? Mm -hmm. 15 hours maybe. <laughs> uh, Manchester is quite north. Mm -hmm. no, it's just Portland, mm -hmm. nearly as far. Uh, winter, but it's quite cold in winter. Mm -hmm. I see snowing. Mm -hmm. This is winter here. <laughs> but no, it will smell not, it won't smell so bad anymore in the production of it, after the rain. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, I, I shouldn't talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> it's in spite of you. <laughs> In spite of me, it always rains where I am. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you say that you want something in your head? Well, 15 years in, in Munich and in, 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 in Hamburg and things, always I was even like, when, when it rains, I say, car must be in town. <laughs> it was like a... I went to Morocco in the desert, mm -hmm. my atlas. What happened? Yeah. Three days heavy rain, the first time in 20 years. <laughs> so, it's not good for me. That's why I have my bones and things. It's always rain and humid. They asked me, <laughs> I could make now. I think four years I was not in California, in LA, San Diego. Since then there was a drought. <laughs> <laughs> I could make a story out of it, if I would like. Yeah. Yeah. You could ask but... some money. <coughs> yes, I asked them, do you want me to come? How much do you pay? <laughs> but they, uh, they, they, they were not so convinced. <laughs> yeah, it would be good money, eh? a rainmaker. Oh, Here too, this is the first year since 20 years it rains so much. But you come every year. No, no, I, the last five years, <laughs> four, four years I was not here. Uh -huh. And I didn't talk. The moment I started talking, it started raining like hell. Uh -huh. 
Fuck it. I should be quiet, huh? Yes, I was going to say that. <laughs> <laughs> I can make even the clouds <coughs> Since girls don't cry about me anymore, the clouds have to cry. Except when you came to Ireland, it didn't rain. Yeah, but normally in Ireland it always rains, so yeah, I had to make you, you I had rain. to I had to make a difference. Oh. <laughs> Otherwise there is, you cannot make a story out of it. In Ireland it rains 360 days a year. And I, when I came, one week, no rain. And everyone, it is so tempting, it was a big trap, because without rain, Ireland is paradise. It's very nice to be there, and the Irish people, they're so funny. It's just the way they speak. It's, what the fuck? What the fuck is going on here? <laughs> very foggy today. No, I like, but <laughs> I was safe because the last two days when I stopped talking, it rained like hell. And then it's, oh, this is normal. Then I was released. Otherwise, maybe I had to move there. So. She moved from Holland to there. When Holland rains in Ireland, it's the same. All about love. You married an Irish guy. Well, initially, but not anymore. That's not anymore? Oh, no. What? No, that, that was the original reason. That's what I said. Originally, yeah. But I'm originally, not, mar not yeah. married to him anymore. Oh, I'm just Happily divorced. Hmm? Happily divorced. Happily divorced. And now happily married again to a... And again? <laughs> to a man from the same village in Holland. From the first kindergarten <laughs> yes. French. <laughs> it's the change. you move away and far, yeah, whatever, and what do you marry? I just gave. <laughs> she just gave up. Yeah. Or gave in. Giving in. It was meant to happen. From the five years old, four years old. Yes. They first promised kiss. Each other promised. Good. Andreas. Andreas, huh? Ready. <laughs> Something else? We have to think about it. Is that so hard? Yeah. <laughs> to think of a question. <laughs> no, it's, it's hard to find a question which is worth asking. Yeah. But that's not the case in my head. For me, every, any question is good enough. Um. So don't be shy. It doesn't have to be a good one. <laughs> I take these days I take everything. <laughs> <laughs> it's amazing. Some they really think I have to make a good question because I have to present myself in a good question. I have to be clever, intelligent, or very profound. Because my question has to be a question. It has to sound as if I know the answer already. Or <laughs> well, not? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's stupid, huh? Very stupid. Everyone is afraid to lose his face or his... The Germans, they have no problem with losing their face because they have none. No, I have to see this number having this block. This is a block. Yeah, my girlfriend's name is Block. <laughs> what is it? No. That's not future, but that's abstract. Abstract? Yeah, for you, yeah. So you're very blocked by movement. A solid block simply means nothing comes, nothing goes. As solid as it can be. It cannot be disturbed and not be destroyed. Is solid as a block of existence. Nothing can be added, nothing can be taken away. It is as it is. Cannot be killed because life cannot be killed. And this is life. Solid.
as it was never created. That why it's called block. There is no creating. Nothing was ever created, so nothing can ever be destroyed. So whatever the only thing you can you can destroy is that the idea that something is created. So you can say that not, when you see nothing is ever born, that goes with it. Right. This scene comes and goes as everything. So it's as relative as everything. So if that is a misunderstanding, shit. So it always sounds profound, but even the most profound statement, that's the fun of it. It can be hell as profound and thing, and it's still empty for what you are, because it doesn't make you more or less as you are anyway. It can be absolute profound and absolute intelligent and absolute solid, whatever, and still you are not more. And it can be totally bullshit and totally unprofound and low and fuck, and it doesn't make you less. Fantastic, huh? But this idea is that when you become this scholar and thing and great insights and things that it makes you more and then you become greedy of being this total king of knowledge and thing. Wow. Of course, and I understand if I tell somebody <laughs> all of that is empty and you can just forget it because it's worth nothing. Some hate me for that. And I love it. all the big experiences and ah. but it's so um, it's paradoxical that when you say that uh, okay it kind of makes a bit of sense but if I say it to myself it's totally you don't, you, rubbish. you don't believe yourself I know no you can only you, you, you can take it from me because I don't want to give you anything you want to, by you telling it to yourself, you try to gain something, yeah. an understanding. But if I talk to you, there is no giving and no taking. It's, there's just uh, entertainment. And then the understanding is natural, but not by understanding. There's a natural understanding by being that. What is knowledge or understanding? But if you talk to yourself, you make, try to make it relative. You want to own it by that. You want to have it, and then it doesn't work. Then it's relative, and there's something what is owned, an owner, and something what is owned, a knower, and what is known. But when whatever, when I don't claim, but the knowledge that talks here is a knowledge which is there, and there's a natural understanding of knowledge, which is absolute. So it's not giving or taking anything. It's just as it is. So there's nothing added and nothing taken away from anything. It's just that. And then there's nothing to take. So that you can take. That's easy. That's an effortlessness of being what you are. But if you want to give it to yourself, <laughs> it doesn't work. Because then it's like an attempt to own it, to make it stable. You want to make something what is fleeting stable. So that understanding what it comes and goes by understanding is already gone. And you know it by instinct. But the understanding you are is never coming, never going. That knowledge that you exist, that knowledge which is your nature, is so solid in its nature, can never be forgotten, never be remembered, it never needs anything. No, it's just satisfaction, it's a fact that you are. So sat is fact. Not this fiction of one who wants to give something. So it's not part of the fiction. It's not a part of anything. There are no parts in it. And from there you can never depart and to there you can never go back. So there is no fear in it because that you can, there is no, no gainer, no loser in that. There is no ownership. And without ownership, no fear. But in that fiction of giving, taking, having, there's fear, permanent. So doubtful. Doubtful understanding and then doubting it, it's already gone. 
doubting, 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 doubting. So you can, am, are you a maybe or you are that what is with and without a maybe who appears in front of you? The maybe is wakes up every morning and falls asleep every night. But that what is in spite of the maybe being or not being, or the maybe believing or not believing, the maybe the knower knows or doesn't know, that knowledge, undisturbable, it's never more or less, it's just what you are. And there's no shift to that, because you never left it, that's the problem. There's no bridge from there to there. No bridge. Hmm? Yeah, but when you are in this maybe position, your belief says, like, by understanding, I will build a bridge. I can go back. But there's no bridge. So, but you have an imaginary bridge. So just in case I can make a bridge by understanding that keeps you going. But so by your imagination, you are in the dream. By imagination. You imagine yourself in a dream, and now you think, I need to imagine myself to go back into that what is prior. But then you make the prior even imagination. So now it's too late. Whatever you imagine now comes out of fiction. It's all too late. So the fiction is that something has to be imagined and something has to happen. Or it undone. You have to do you have to undo something to be that. Something has to go. Me! <laughs> as long as the me believes the me has to go, the me is fine. I asked you that the very first day, and then you said the only thing that needs to go is the idea that something needs to go. That can, yeah, maybe that's the only idea who can drop, that's the idea that an idea has to go. Oh, come. Idealistic, an idol. But if, what does it want? <laughs> when you go to a base, stop playing. <laughs> Good happen. Yeah. It's always beginning of December, it stops. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I, I make my plans like that. So it becomes like a rumor. <laughs> so that's a good story. What? Are ah, you talking? <laughs> <laughs> and where does this voice come from? <laughs> Anybody home? <laughs> <laughs> so what? Um, there was a similar question some days before, but um, there are sometimes faces in my life where I dream more like... You have faces, yeah. yeah. You make faces <laughs> in your life. <laughs> and um, I have the feeling that it has a meaning, you know, like a meaning of showing sides of me that I don't want to see with my conscious yeah, it's, mind. It's, it's very mean, it's very mean. Yeah, when it has a meaning, it's very mean. Mean, meaning, mean. When you look for a meaning, for me, me looks for meaning. What's the meaning of me? Meaning, having a meaning, what meaning do I need to be a mean, meaning, meaning? So what's, what's about your story? I wanted to ask if it has... If you should give an importance to it, your faces. No, to the dreams. To the, to the dreams? Yeah, to the, like, the subconscious mind that is yeah. showing things that I cannot see with my... <laughs> I just I was just looking if my psychotherapist was present. But no. Sorry, my doctor doctor the doctor went out. Yeah.
It's on holiday right now. Dr. Freud is just went. <laughs> Hello. No. I just tried to call him, but he's out of reach right now. So I, maybe I, when he comes back, he, he may talk to you. <laughs> but this is a typical question normally in satsangs and spades and everything. About this system and meaning and this one, my purpose of life and all of that. And then comes Eckhart Tolle. He, give, he gives you a purpose. Working for the new earth with me. All your, what you have done till now, all your thing has a meaning because now you are a soldier for the new war for peace on earth. really doesn't want to listen anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I will finish soon. But if you like that, I have to stay here and talk more. <laughs> we'll talk now. Yeah, could, you, could you swallow it that uh, all of that has no meaning? You see? That's why you give it importance. You can only bear it because you give it importance in my life and things. I did it my way and blah, blah, blah. It's not for you to take it. No one can take it. Everyone wants to survive in whatever way. But when Kali goes shopping, Then you will be shocked and in spite of all the meanings and things, your head rolls. When you don't become a rolling stone, you will become a rolling head. So when grace is when grace goes shopping, it shows no mercy. And whatever you have done or not done, in spite of all your good and bad, shop. That's called Yama. And then the yammering is over, when Yama goes shopping. <laughs> All the poor means get harvesting, the big harvester, the reaper. It's a sensor, and a sensor. What do now we can make two things? It that wants me to talk more? Yes. Or it wants me to talk <laughs> stop now. <laughs> you see we can fish now for meaning. What is the meaning of that? That's the same as you you now try your whole life find the meaning of why does it rain today? Because of what? Me not being behaving right or why whatever? Our natural is a bit biggest whatever. You, one day you go out and everyone says hello, everyone is friendly and smiles at you. And you think, oh, now I am at home. The next day, no one knows you. <laughs> <laughs> you just look away as if you don't exist. <laughs> one day they give total, uh, yeah. whatever, yes, sure, friends yeah, and the enemies best. And enemies yeah. become friends. Totally. <laughs> the next day, the whole, the whole population pops away. <laughs> You're fucking totally alone and no one likes you, no one says hello, no one puts his hand on his heart. <laughs> <laughs> and you think, fuck, this is, I feel so alien here, I am not belonging here, this is not my place. Tomorrow I will see, if this continues, I will go, <laughs> right away. And, then the, and you already already packed your things, maybe. This is one of my days, and then you next day go out, and go, hey, how are you? Oh, an early friend, oh, wonderful to see you, oh, what can I do for you? <laughs> it fucks you from all directions, I tell you. One day it lifts you up, and the next day, bam! Puts you on the ground, crashes you like hell. And then you ask, what is the meaning of me being uplifted and down? What, what have I done or not done? How can I now control it maybe? 
<laughs> when it shows you, always in control. Like the like this yo-yos. <laughs> then maybe someone comes. Oh, you have to be the puppeteer, not the puppet. You better be the puppeteer. That one who is placed with the puppet, and not the one who is played with. Then you do all what you can do to become the puppeteer. <laughs> That is like becoming aware, this awareness talk. Awareness. I am that which is unaffected. Or I am that what affects everything. I change. Now I am the origin of everything and I am not that what is an effect of it. Now I am that. Hmm? Is that the end of the story? Or is that still a little puppet? Even, maybe the puppeteer is even the puppet who is played this. Hmm? Who plays the puppeteer? What's the time? Hey, it's over. Talk <laughs> time. <laughs> Good. Yeah, but compared to Seattle, this is nothing. Eh? <laughs> That's rains in Vancouver. <laughs> but I still have no compassion with Eckhart. Even if it rains so much in Vancouver. <laughs> Vancouver. What a name. Wank. Hoover. What comes out of Wank? Hoover. Hmm? Actually, a nice city, eh? I was two hours in Vancouver. It was on the airport. And I saw the silhouette mountains. Looks good, but not tempting. On the way. So what's about your meaning? <laughs> your meaning is gone? Um, no. No? I still hope for a meaning, but I don't see uh, yeah. No question. No, you have to go to an astrologer. No. They give you meaning. Yeah, but not <coughs> They tell you what it meant. Uh, why? Uranus was for coming from that side and Saturn from behind and that one and Jupiter clack pop, pop. <laughs> you have been to astrologers? What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have my uh, both on personal. personal astrologer every morning he gives me a report what happens today. <laughs> Even if I don't ask, it tells <laughs> So, fracture, oh, Saturn, Venus. Saturn. Conjunction. I know exactly why. That's the meaning of Saturn, Venus. Not, so, not moving so much. Venus is home. Stay at home. Don't move so much. Saturn. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we got a room to go to your house on 26 what? to have such thing there. No. No. I got the room for somebody. You went there? I went there. There was one small moment outside and I didn't dare to, to look even if there is a bear one. Huh? I just, uh, Girls have no shame. <laughs> if they want something, they go for it. For sure. Yeah. So, Brazilian-German con connection is the most dangerous. Oh. Sherry. Sherry? <laughs> Sherry? Want you want to share? Yeah, experience. You okay. want to hear? Don't ask me. <laughs> we won't. They are all ready for it. I am never ready for it. No, I just feel very thankful to you because of everything you take away. I had so beautiful experiences here at you, first weeks. And all this, you know, 
stillness and emptiness and all this that I had to control afterwards and yeah. it was hard work. And then I come to you and you just destroy everything and I just feel depressed a bit in the beginning but then it's just really... No, it's, it's like the eye of a needle, like it's a depression-like thing and then when it goes through, you relax. Mm -hmm. But you cannot take your experiences with you. Yeah, you just be naked again and being naked, naked existence is nothing is more enjoyable than being naked existence without any meaning, bullshit, and stillness, and silence, and welcoming, or not welcoming, all of that is whatever it is. But the nakedness of just being what you cannot not be, there is no, no more peace and joy in anything else. The rest is all that meaningful bullshit of one's life. And this nakedness, not knowing anything, not need of knowing and whatever. This needlessness, just whatever. Blankety blank. So thank you. For nothing, huh? For nothing. I know it, I know it. No, I'm, I'm always happy to take everything away. Even if one doesn't ask me, I take it anyway. But I don't keep it. Or should I keep it? <laughs> <laughs> some, sometimes some people want to unload things, so it's unloading, and, and then they think there's someone stupid who takes it. <laughs> They unload, but uh, it goes just into the absolute rubbish behind me. <laughs> <laughs> so junk comes, junk goes. That's quite nice. It's all junk. It's all rubbish. Hello, goodbye. Open back door. But it will wait for the next time again anyway, because whatever goes there, will come there. You cannot get rid of it. Yeah, this moment is a total déjà vu of infinite times you experienced this moment already before. So this moment is like, like the chicken of all, and the last moment is the egg. Where this chicken came from. And this chicken is laying the X, which is the egg of the last moment who created this chicken. <laughs> what, how, how make a chicken? What, what's the sound of a chicken? Oh. Well, that's a <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a chicken wants to be a cock. <laughs> In France, the cock makes cockery call. The only country where the, the cock makes cockery call. In Russia, cockery call. It's kikeriki. In Japan, it's kikeriki. Everywhere in the world is Kikiriki. <laughs> but only in France is Kokiriko. <laughs> Kokiriko. Look, look, look. Okay, now I can go fast before it starts again. <laughs> so if I don't see you, I see you.